Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today we're going to be talking about a few things, and let me give you a synopsis of this. One is, instead of loving yourself, how to be kinder with yourself, and you can start with that. That's where healing starts. By the way, healing does happen. Second thing is we're going to be talking about this incredible, and I'm honored to say I'm going to have a special guest next week, and his name is Greg Reed. Um, Greg Reed is not only a keynote speaker, he's an entrepreneur, he is uh, a businessman, uh, a rainmaker, which I literally believe he is a rainmaker, and he is a producer. So he's just an amazing person. If you want to know anything about not only events, but change of life in the business world as an entrepreneur, as a speaker, as a producer of movies, and an author of several books, um, you have to tune in next week. So let's talk about this. I did a post on Instagram on a message that I had received. By the way, thank you so much for all the messages and the texts that I received. And one of my messages was, how can I love myself when no one else has loved me? That's a very valid question. And I felt like a dear Abby or Dr. Laura for a moment and I had to ponder and think about what is it that we lack in our life and what is it that we want in our life. So to feel love, because not every one of us know how to love ourselves and what exactly is love ourselves, which is a core, core belief. Love is a core belief, so is fear. And so this is what I told her. I said, what if you start by small little steps and start with kindness and being kind to yourself? Um, have you had an experience of someone in your life being kind to you? And she said, yes. And I said, so start thinking about all the kind things that has happened to you and the people who have been kind to you. Maybe they don't love you or it's not that they don't love you, it's what you feel. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you. If you don't feel loved by someone, is it because you don't feel it or is it that they don't love you? So because a lot of people can love you, except you don't feel loved by them. And that's an internal thing, you know, heal within started by realizing that healing starts within us. So when we don't feel it, that means we have, we are not incongruent with ourselves. We're not taking care of ourselves. And it's okay for you to take time to do nothing instead of being busy with some things, either going on the screen or distracting yourself with habits and behaviors that takes you away from feeling your feelings. That's right, feeling your feelings. And that's not easy. It's not easy when you are feeling anxious to sit with it and say, okay, I am feeling anxious and I can just sit with this and this will go away because feelings do fade. So when you're angry, just 
be angry know that you're angry become one with your anger as to why you're angry instead of distracting yourself with something else or blowing up on someone else it's like having a communication with yourself to understand your own internal feelings in order for you to validate yourself and that in itself this is an act of kindness one of my clients yesterday fear of cars because she was in an accident so as a clinical hypnotherapist one of the things that we do is tap into the subconscious because the cognitive thinking analyzing judging mind can give you all kinds of answers but it's not the emotional connection to the action or to the problem to the habit or the behavior so through hypnosis one of the things that i asked was if you could just close your eyes and on the count of three one two three for you to tap into the first traumatic experience that you had or you can remember and the first thing she said was i'm in the car and you know the way of the therapy that we do the timeline and everything all the questions that i asked what she recalled was being in the car when she was 12 years old and being left alone by her sister who was 18 years old that she left her there to go and meet with her boyfriend and apparently it took longer than it needed to be and although 12 years old is not a child but the feeling of abandonment that she had at that moment being in the car felt similar to her getting into an accident by herself and hitting the curbside and having her cur car turn and she felt alone she felt out of uh out of place that she had no one to help her and fear took over See, the beauty of our subconscious mind, the beauty of our body and the subconscious is that emotional component is always, just like your body, there to protect you, never ever to harm you. But that protection was also creating a fear factor that reminded her of when she was 12 years old and then we went even further back to remind her of something else understanding that this is not happening at this moment and you're in total control and you can visualize this and you can do the same thing and realize that when you are depressed angry sad all the emotions anxious feeling overwhelmed feeling like really upset or rejected which is one of the things that I talk about rejection is also core and the abandonment and I said if you can just watch this like a movie how would you feel now if you do the same thing in the privacy of your own comfort at home whatever it is that it's bothering you it's affecting you if you can tap into it you can do it with journaling and realize that when you come to be kind to yourself to listen to your body if there is a part of your body that it's having a discomfort where in your body is it where do you feel this discomfort or you want to run away from and just sit with the body again is it your stomach is it your heart palpitating do you get sweaty palms and if you do just hold on to that and if you can breathe through it instead of running away from it it's called nourishing yourself 
nurturing yourself and being kind to you. That's the first step. The second step is that as you are sitting right there with everything that is going on, just give yourself one loving word, a word of kindness, a word, a gesture of kindness. You can hold yourself and say, I'm okay. I am safe. I'll be fine. This too shall pass. I will give it a few moments and I'm okay. You know, automatically, I do the same thing. And when I close my eyes, it's not to disconnect from here. It's just at that very moment, automatically, as you saw, I tap into my body. This is so automatic for me. And it will become so automatic for you as you begin to practice. Self-hypnosis is something that I also guide you and teach you so that you can practice at home and know that you can be in total control of your mind, your body, and of your emotions. That's right. Healing does take place. So the next one is of all the things you can do for yourself that is literally empowering is for you to learn the word no. So you can say no more often than when you say yes to please someone else. Come to honor yourself. Setting that boundary that when someone is asking for you to do something where in the past you used to jump just to please them, you take a moment. Is this what I really want to do? Or if you're at work, you have to do because it is part of your assignment. Or is it always because you want to please someone else for them not to get angry, not to be upset with you? So sit with that and start analyzing that part for yourself. Setting boundaries starts with your own. The next one is celebrate small little wins every single day when you say no and they say okay and that's it and it may be uncomfortable but you did it when you want something you go and do it when you want to take a walk and you go around the block and then you realize i did it Start, stop analyzing or uh, putting too much pressure that you have to do a mile. You can do a, just walk around the block. And that small little win needs a celebration. And you know, it, the celebration is not necessarily by distracting yourself with another food or drink or cigarettes. is just to sit with yourself and say, I did it. I did it. That's it. And just stay with that. And you will realize that your tummy feels good. You might even hear a gurgling sound. And the last thing is positive gratitude, gratefulness. And at that moment, be grateful. Did you know that you can just sit? And be grateful to your fingers and to your hands. I know it feels silly to your legs that do the walking for you. Um, and every part of who you are, just be grateful. No one is perfect. Believe me, no one is perfect. There are no perfections. And in this universal way that we are all on Mother Earth, cohabitating with each other. Not everybody loves everyone. <laughs> I'm sure you know this. <laughs> By now you know this. Look around you, within your family, within your community, 
even in our country and globally. And yet millions of people are doing what? Prayers, journaling, doing a lot of self-help. In the last decade or two, there is more self-help books. There is more people coming together, doing healing work. Uh, prayer is huge. And all these self-help, doing yogas and retreats and everything, everyone is striving for what? Inner peace, gratefulness, appreciation, self-love, self-acceptance, self-appreciation, self-validation, and everything you do for yourself is exactly that. So self-love starts with gestures, words of kindness, and taking care of yourself, just small little things. If you brush your teeth every day, that's self-care. You shower, self-care. You cut your hair, you put your makeup on. Everything that you do is self-care. And especially, ladies, self-care, especially when you have children and they truly are looking up to you. You may not notice it, that they do look up to you. They watch everything that you do and you say. Actually, they don't know any better. All they want is your kindness, and they too want to feel love, just like you. So, and this goes because we're all human. As human, it's called being humanity. So I have this thing that I share and I say, life is like a camera. Focus on what is important. Capture the good times, the good memories, and bank it in. Remember, I've been talking about banking in memories, especially the good ones, right? And develop, develop from the negative, and if that doesn't work, you are in total control of your life, your choices. Take another picture. So focus, capture, and develop. And if you don't like it, just like all the selfies you take and you delete it, you can do the same thing. At all times, you are in total control because you do matter. So that was my message to today. And next week, I am so excited. I want you to tune in next Tuesday, 12 noon, right here on Facebook. And by all means, as always, if you like this message, if this information was beneficial to you, by all means, tune in, not only next week. Um, my guest, Dr. Greg Reed, and subscribe share and like so I'll see you next week bye bye thank you for being here if you want to check out some of the testimonials that i've got click right here but if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago two weeks ago even a year ago click 